I, yeah. I remember voting for it because I thought that it was common sense criminal justice reform. And it was a total bait and switch. And I'm supposed to pretend like it was a great proposition that I should be proud of voting in favor of. But no, it was a bait and switch. I want people who are trafficking children, okay, for disgusting, you know, sexual abuse to be in prison. That's where they belong. They, they belong in prison if they're trafficking children. So, doing my- strangle, strangle. Strangling his wife, he should be in prison. There's been a ton of coping happening ever since Joe Biden dropped out of the race and endorsed Kamala Harris. And it seems like just like whenever Joe Biden, you know, run the won the nomination for president and somebody got a call and they called everybody else and said, everybody drop out of the race, everybody endorsed Joe Biden. Same thing's kind of happening with Kamala Harris, where everybody's just kind of following falling in line. It's a very astroturfed campaign where it's, you know, everybody's acting like Kamala Harris is hip and cool and you know, the next big thing, whatever. People like Anna Kasparian, who actually have a brain on the left, are calling out the woke nonsense that's happening with this Kamala Harris campaign. Let's get into this video here from the Young Turks of Anna Kasparian breaking the hearts of all these Kamala Harris supporters, of all these Democrat supporters going into this next election, including Jen Uger, who's sitting right next to Anna. Let's check this out. She's got both sides. And so I, I, I didn't see anything in there, and I'm obviously we might debate this, that where I thought, Wow, she's really supporting like radical left or defund the police. So she's in that case, she's supporting getting protesters out on bail. That was what her intent was. Okay, that's not that bad. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it does seem pretty good. Just like voting in favor of Prop 47 in California sounded pretty good. But then it turned out that they reclassified all sorts of violent crimes, including child sex trafficking, domestic violence like strangulation. From felonies to misdemeanors. So, okay, real quick on Prop 47. Uh, so, if you know, if you don't live in California, there's no reason for you to know it. Uh, but we voted on a ballot measure, and to be fair, this was us, the the people of California, that voted on yeah. it. Although the ballot measures are often very confusing, this is a perfect example of it. And we s- said that we would move some felonies to misdemeanors. But I went back and looked at the text of Prop 47, and. It doesn't say any of the crimes. No, it doesn't. So then, like, how could you put up a ballot measure and say we're going to move some felonies to misdemeanors and not tell us which felonies? And so then, when they did this thing where, oh yeah, it made it seem like it was like no big deal felonies, like nonviolent drug possession. Nonviolent drug possession. Okay, I probably yeah. voted for it. To I be voted. Honest. I, yeah, I voted for it. I, yeah. I remember voting for it because I thought. That it was common sense criminal justice reform. And it was a total bait and switch. And I'm supposed to pretend like it was a great proposition that I should be proud of voting in favor of. But no, it was a bait and switch. I want people who are trafficking children, okay, for disgusting, you know, sexual abuse to be in prison. That's where they belong. They they belong in prison if they're trafficking children. So doing my- strangle strang- strangling his wife, he should be in prison. Yeah. I- And it's crazy because what Anna Kasparian is saying here, I guarantee you if I scroll down on the Young Turks comment section here, they're all trying to cancel Anna Kasparian. Every time she says something, Anna Kasparian says something like this, not only do the Young Turks fans, but the entirety of the woke left try to cancel Anna Kasparian for saying that people who commit crimes should be in jail. The left does not want people to go to jail. They want they want the left wants everybody to be able to do whatever the hell they want. And we're seeing that happen in California where in some places people can steal up to $999 worth of groceries and not get, you know, not got not get put in jail. You know, they don't even care. They just let them go. It's not it's not a felony at all. It's just wild. That's if the left had it their way, if the woke left had it their way, everywhere would be like that. Everywhere would just be the wild west. And Anna Kasparian, who is definitely a leftist, is saying, "Hey guys, we can't go that far with this extremism." You know, and they cancel her for it. They cancel Anna Kasparian for it. It's just outrageous how vague that uh, prop, that ballot measure was. Okay, now Anna, what I saw in Kamala Harris was that she was, as usual with Kamala Harris, uh, didn't make a comment on Prop 47. So anyone who likes Prop 47 or hates Prop 47 can then put in their desires into that empty vessel. Uh, into, I don't mean Kamala Harris overall, I mean that particular position was an empty vessel. Am I seeing it wrong or, or no? Well, let me give you more, because there's more. Again, her record is super mixed and it depends on what's hot at the moment. So when tough on crime was hot, she went with tough on crime. When soft on crime was hot, she went with soft on crime. So here's another example of that. As Attorney General of California, she pushed pushed for prison reform, which is good because the prisons were awful, mm-hmm. right? 
I thought prison reform meant, hey, the conditions are disgusting and inhumane and we must improve the, uh, the conditions. No, in California, they went in an opposite direction. Why don't we actually save the state some money, shut the prisons down entirely and just release people? If you're fed up with all the woke nonsense happening in the world like I am, go check out bringtheasteroid.shop where we just released some new designs that look great and also allow you to express to everyone that you are just tired of the direction that America is going in right now. And that you're just like me and many others that watch this channel and watch Bring the Asteroid as well. And you just want it to go back to how it used to be. Check out bringtheasteroid.shop. We are limited on supplies for this drop. So if you want one, I would suggest that you go ahead and act soon. Let's get back to the video. Deincarceration, that, that was the policy that she actually pushed for. And so uh, what was the result of that? Well, let's get to those details. As of uh, last week, prison officials reported there was 92,480 people locked up in California's prison systems, down from a height of more than 156,000 inmates during the early 2010s before the law was passed. So this was one of the laws that she championed, okay? Now, California's reforms created all sorts of problems, including, well, a giant spike in crime. So the California State Attorney General's office reported that from 2014 to 2023, violent crime had risen by more than 30%, including jumps in rapes, aggravated assaults, and murders. I know some of the leftists out there think that when I talk about a spike in crime, I'm just talking about shoplifting. No, I'm talking about rape, I'm talking about murder. I'm talking about things that terrorize communities, especially marginalized communities that you purport to care about, but don't care about at all. So that- Dude, Anna, Anna is cooking right here. Like, there's no doubt about it. She is 100% cooking right here. And I know the left is going to cancel her for what she's saying right now. Because what they're going to say, obviously, the left hates anybody going to jail. They just want everybody to run free. They're also going to say Anna Kasparian is racist. And they're going to spin it that way because they're going to say, well, look, it's always, you know, minorities that are getting put in jail. And if you want more people to get put in jail, that means you hate minorities because they're always the ones that are getting put in jail. It's like, no, she just wants less crime. And also, even though minorities are put in jail more than non-minorities, you know, at a higher ratio, also minority, you know, I don't even know what the right word is, not civilization, not society, but like minority areas of the world where it's predominantly minorities, they are affected by this violent crime more than non-minorities, you know? So maybe you can also spin it in the way that Anna Kasparian just cares about those communities, you know? more more than more than you actually do which is the way that Anna Kasparian is actually spinning it which is also the way that I think is the truth you know that 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 is the truth if you care about getting rid of violent crime in any area or any community you probably care more about that community than people who are trying to let violent criminals run free in that community and that's just common sense but the people who watch the young turks have have none of that in their head that's that's the kind of stuff they're going to attack her on that's the reality but what's amazing is you go to the left and they're attacking her for being a cop and for being too tough on crime. Yeah, well, I mean, look, that's the nature of a politician who's trying to be, depending on your framing, moderate or wishy-washy, right? So for example, she actually did hold some police departments in California accountable on training, which I love. I think that was the number one issue. I've talked a lot about that. They're too quick to shoot. They get taught that disrespecting a police officer is like the biggest crime in America, etc. And she held some of those departments accountable, that's great. On the other hand, when a cop committed a crime, she almost never prosecuted them. And so like activists, and I don't mean like far left activists, it's just people who care about police yeah, reform. I, I, I'm good critical people. of that, I'm yeah. critical of that. Yeah. If a cop actually carries out abuse and is, is terrorizing the community that he's supposed to be serving, he should be prosecuted, she should be prosecuted. So of course, who, I don't even know, like who are they even arguing against here? I don't understand, you know? like. Do they genuinely think that there's people who think that a cop, maybe there are some people out there who think this, but they're idiots. Nobody who is in support of police in, in the last you know five years or whatever it's been, who is, who is saying like back the blue and all this stuff. I don't think most of them would say if there's a cop who is terrorizing their community, especially using violence, that they should just be walking free, much less be a police officer anymore. They should be prosecuted just like anybody else. You know, and that's why 
having the, the, the body cams and stuff like that are so important because we can tell very easily, it, did this person have to use violent force or was this person looking for a way to use violent force and things like that? Nobody is arguing that cops should have total immunity. I do think they should have more immunity than average citizens because they're put in a lot of high pressure situations. And, you know, a lot of people do disrespect cops. And there's a lot of narratives going on about cops that not only makes it uneasy to be a cop, but also people get uneasy whenever they're pulled over, especially if they're certain colors and stuff like that. So they should have a little bit more immunity, you know, a little bit more leeway, but they shouldn't be immune. No, no doubt about it. I don't think anybody thinks that they should be immune. If there's a cop terrorizing a city or a community, like Anna Kasparian saying, of course they should be prosecuted. And everybody who has any sort of rational thinking mind agrees with that. Like, who are they arguing against here? So, right, and she wouldn't. Yeah. So an incredibly mixed bag here. Yeah, so here's the other thing that, in general, the left has been kind of critical of her in the past. But I actually think this is a good thing because it shows that she was an effective prosecutor. So uh, felony conviction rates rose under Harris when she was a district attorney from 52% to 71% and gun crime convictions rose to 92%. Meaning she didn't just prosecute and fail to convict, she would prosecute and she would convict. And that was in the first five years that she was in office according to her book. We are sending three times as many offenders to state prison as we were in 2001, three years before I took office, Harris wrote. She also increased convictions for drug sellers from 56% in 2003 to 74% in 2008, Harris noted. So uh, I've got no love for the drug traffickers, but for people who are struggling with addiction, people who are caught with uh, possession, I, I do not want them to be thrown in prison. I do want the system to actually have a program in place to help them. And California actually used to have that. They were called uh, drug courts. And essentially if someone uh, was addicted to drugs and were committing crimes as a result of that addiction, the courts would give them an option. Either you go to jail or you go to rehabilitation, you get clean. And most people would choose the second option, that's the obvious option. And it would help them, a lot of people, get past their addiction. That was a much better model. Well, I, this is uh, the best argument for Kamala Harris on this issue, uh, if you ask me. And I am actually uh, moved by it a little bit, uh, which is she says, and she delivered, and you can see it in the stat, I. Uh, prosecuted and convicted a record number of serious felons. Exactly. Uh, but if you were a low level offender that was just, uh, you know, did some recreational drug use, etc., I put those people into more of a rehab track. Exactly. But that's exactly what I would want a prosecutor to do. I don't want you to be too tough on low level offenders that, that you could actually rehabilitate and get on a better track. And I, and I don't want you to be too soft on really serious criminals. So you can argue that's what a great majority of citizens want. So you could say, hey, that's a pretty good record. Yeah, and look, I'm not saying she was perfect as a prosecutor. There are certainly areas that I, I can be critical of, including the unwillingness to prosecute cops who abuse their power. Uh, but you know, there's this. There's this myth going around about how she was like really throwing the book at people who were caught with possession, but that's actually not true. She championed a program at that time that offered low level drug dealers, drug dealers, low level drug dealers, right? So random person on the corner selling whatever. Instead of throwing that person in prison, offered them an opportunity to receive a high school diploma, job training and access to available work instead of prison sentences. I can get behind that, I like that, that's smart. Yeah. So, so look, as this whole video is basically them just explaining why Kamala Harris is an awful candidate. And then at the very end, Anna Kasparian has to throw in there, look, she did this one thing that was pretty good. But this whole time, they're just talking about Jen Uger and Anna Kasparian, just talking about how she's so flip floppy on what she did as a prosecutor and, and what she's done as a vice president and all these things. And just exposing the things that the left really doesn't want to hear. And, and I don't think that Jenk would do this if Anna Kasparian wasn't sitting here. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I think Anna Kasparian has brought a new aspect to this show where they're actually getting a lot more middle of the road than most left shows out there. Most left leaning shows are just so insufferably woke that you can't even like it's hard for me to even make videos on it. Like The View, there's just no point in, in trying to argue those people. Like I'm still going to do it because I, I just can't help myself, but they're they're just lost, you know, whereas Anna Kasparian, I think, can be convinced 
if there's a good argument presented to her that she is wrong on a certain thing. Let me know in the comments what you thought about what Anna Kasparian and Jenk Uger had to say about Kamala Harris being just so flip-floppy, so wishy-washy as a prosecutor and as a vice president, and therefore most likely not a good candidate for president. Let me know in the comments what you think about this whole Anna Kasparian versus Kamala Harris situation.